Hey, welcome to ACPE 2019 Explore It. Um, my name is Susan Bernard. I'm the IT director at Tiger Tualatin School District, and I'm one of your school board or your school board, your <laughs> board members. Um, and welcome to the very first presentation of our conference. This is the Cisco Meraki Explore and Experience a Win-Win with Cisco Meraki. Simple, powerful IT for a simple or for a better student <coughs> experience. We've got Debbie Weth and Brad Pepper with um, Meraki and with Eagle Point that are doing co-presenting today. And I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Susan. Hi, everybody. My name's Brad Pepper. I am the uh, Meraki specialist for the Cisco team for the Northwest. So very glad to be a part of ACPE. It's my first one. And I've heard this is like the Super Bowl of uh, conferences in the Northwest. So I'm excited to present to you. Um, K-12 is a very important vertical for Meraki, and it's uh, very near and dear to our heart. So, uh, so hopefully I can shed some light on why we're a good fit for uh, K-12, and, and, um, and uh, hopefully you can walk away and kind of learn something about Meraki. Uh, now, let's, uh, let's take a little poll here, and, and I, I want to keep this interactive. If anyone wants to jump in or tell a story or do whatever they want to do, please feel free. Um, how many in the audience are familiar with Meraki? Okay. And how many are currently using Meraki today? All right. So the front row people are kind of our uh, loyal customers, and the back row are a little more suspect and <laughs> checking it. Okay, I got it. Um, all right, well, let's dive in. Um, so this is the agenda I'm going to follow here. Um, I'm going to talk about why Meraki for K-12, do some use cases why cloud managed IT, walk through our solutions really quick, mainly give you a little blurb on what's new with Meraki. Um, if we have time, I'm going to do a, da a quick dashboard demo because that's, that's really the power of Meraki is the dashboard. There's a lot of hardware out there, but our dashboard's what makes us pretty unique. Um, we're going to have special guests, as Susan mentioned, Debbie and Robert from Eagle, Eagle uh, Point School District that are a good customer of ours. And then we're going to check who is listening throughout the session and uh, have a few giveaways. So maybe that'll, maybe that'll keep you awake. Maybe the sunshine. We'll, we'll see. So <clears throat> start with our mission statement, because I like it. Uh, simplifying powerful technology to free passionate people to focus on their mission. Work simple. So that probably resonates with a few of you, uh, especially in school districts. Uh, my favorite part is the simplifying powerful technology because that's what we're all about. So we're the uh, we're the complete solution: wireless switching, security, SD WAN, endpoint management, Meraki Insight, and security cameras. Now we've been 100% cloud managed from the beginning, so we feel like we're uh, we're we're uh, heavily indebted in the cloud and and. Um, and that's, that's what we built everything around is simplicity. Some of these, I like some of these. Uh, well, first of all, we're, we've been a part of Cisco for six years now. And um, we're continually one of their fastest growing portfolios. We're a big part of Cisco's growth strategy. You see a lot of Cisco R&D going into Meraki products. And you see what Meraki's been doing starting to, uh, starting to take form in a lot of the way Cisco's doing things. So it's, it's pretty cool to see. Um, I like some of this data that we have at the bottom here. We have 270,000 unique customers. Um, this middle one, 2 million plus active networks worldwide. Now, we just hit this milestone, and it took us over 10 years to get to a million active, ne active networks. Well, we, the second million came in the last 20 months. So that just shows the kind of growth trajectory we're on as a, as a business unit. And then we have uh, 5.5 million active dashboard users. It's pretty compelling data. I'm not going to focus a lot on this, but if you, if you guys wonder how Meraki works, we're an out-of-band architecture. This is kind of our trust page. Um, the main thing, I, the main takeaway I think here is that no user data is going through our Meraki cloud infrastructure. Only a small portion of management data comes through our infrastructure. A lot of, a lot of customers ask about that. So let's focus on why Meraki for K-12. Here's what we see as kind of the key drivers for school districts. Uh, network scaling, 
Uh, everybody's dealt with increased client counts, uh, moving to online testing, um, digital learning, uh, BYOD and one-to-one -one initiatives, uh, delivering digitally at school and home, making for a better student experience. Uh, analytical decisions, we have a lot of analytics built into our products. So um, using technology to measure student learning, um, giving a more personalized experience for, for uh, the students, and of course security with data and a secure learning environment. Key challenges, we all, we all uh, can relate to these. Um, managing more and more devices, uh, every day, keeping school secure, both from a, uh, a, from a physical security standpoint to a network standpoint, and uh, just trying to do more with finite resources. IT staffs are being reduced, um, tighter budgets, so Meraki really plays into a lot of these, uh, a lot of these challenges. So here's where uh, we think we have good strengths in K-12. Um, you're seeing a lot more uh, high density scenarios with, um, with, with gyms and with, uh, with uh, classroom, with, with more density needs in classrooms. Safety and security, keeping students, teachers, and staff safe with, uh, with all the uh, security, end security parameters that I'll mention here. Everything with Meraki is built in, so everything's out of the box, ready to go. Uh, makes the troubleshooting easy. Um, you, you can easily troubleshoot remote locations. And then uh, endpoint management, managing thousands of devices, no matter what manufacturer, bringing it all together on one unified platform. So just a couple use cases here, um, how some of our customers are using Meraki. This is Orange County Public Schools, ninth largest district in the US in Central Florida. They're supporting one-to-one -one with high-density Wi-Fi. Um, <clears throat> so they get the high density without the high maintenance. They can easily handle increases in traffic. They get great visibility and control. They can throttle you know, bandwidth, hogs, prioritize the apps that they want to. Um, quick deployment, you can see they can roll out an entire school district in days instead of months. Here's one for a reading school district in southeastern Pennsylvania, 19,000 students, uh, keeping students safe with end-to-end -end security. So we, we kind of bucket our security into three different brackets here. Uh, Endpoint security, um, stopping inappropriate conduct, unwanted applications, um, networking, uh, stopping malicious threats with IPS and anti-malware scanning. And then the physical security piece, quickly finding security incidents, sharing them with teachers or law enforcement. Wayne Highlands, northeastern, northeastern Pennsylvania, becoming a smart district with a simplified network. Uh, so what uh, these guys are using uh, tools to help deliver best-in-class IT and, um, and an amazing student experience. They're using automation to accelerate time to resolution automated firmware updates, and they're just doing more with less. Self-provisioning, self-optimizing, self-healing, without specialized training or dedicated staff. And one more for you, Moreland School District in Santa Clara, 4,800 students, uh, device management made easy with our systems manager. So they launched a one-to-one -one with learning initiatives. They're unifying their management and control of thousands of devices. Uh, redefining the student experience and personalizing it to block harmful content, and uh, just making device management e easy, updating all their devices at one time. So why Meraki Cloud Managed IT? The cloud increases IT efficiency. Um, manageability, turnkey installation, um, and always up-to-the-date features with the Meraki dashboard. Scalability, you can go from one building to an entire campus with a few clicks, and cost savings. We all want that these days. Reducing operational costs with less time spent on day-to-day -day maintenance or managing separate systems. Meraki is a solution that gets smarter over time. So um, you can see this is kind of our feature velocity, and it's pretty rapid. Uh, 
the hardware you buy today con uh, continues to gain new features and updates. Um, so we, um, I'll give you an example. Like uh, we just added um, some intelligence to our wireless platform with wireless health. And it's basically, um, and we, we push this out as a firmware update. There's no extra charge. So we're, we're constantly adding features. We're listening, especially in K-12, we're listening to what customers want, and we're adding those features as we go. So that's kind of the, uh, the beauty of, of having the cloud platform is it's easy to deliver on, on, on rapid feature velocity. I just mentioned that. Um, here we have end-to-end -end network intelligence and assurance. So from the endpoint with systems manager or mobile device management, we added wireless health. Wireless health is going, and I'll, I'll demo that for you, but it's going to go into your, it's going to go in and tell you where your bottlenecks are, where your failures are, and uh, give you more, um, a clearer, clearer granularity into that. The dashboard, and then um, Meraki Insight uh, for WAN applications. What Insight is, Insight is a, um, is a license that goes on top of our security appliance, and that is for uh, SaaS applications, monitoring the health of your SaaS applications, letting you know where there might be a bottleneck or where there might be a problem. Um, even outside of your WAN, it's going to let you know uh, basically where, what's, what's, what the issue is with that as application. It's also going to um, monitor the health of your ISPs and let you know uh, what the troubles are, if there are any on that. So it gives you a lot of intelligence into your network. And so Meraki, what we're really doing is taking the simplicity piece, but trying to add a lot of intelligence on the back end. And then uh, we really, we really uh, pride ourselves on making your remote management easy. Um, if you're a lean IT team and you have multiple locations, we like to say that we make the remote troubleshooting easy, give you visibility into control into those schools that you don't have an uh, IT team on on location, um, and then, of course, uh, zero touch provisioning and traffic acceleration, both with our QoS and our SD-WAN capabilities. So I'm going to just walk through the, uh, the, the portfolio really quick, and then we'll get into the more fun stuff. Um, so we've got the six product families here now, wireless access points, security appliances with SD-WAN, uh, switches, endpoint management. Insight, which I just mentioned, and security cameras. All managed from a single pane of glass. Uh, so hard, this is the stuff that's E-rate eligible year after year. Our wireless access points, our security appliances, and our switches. So you can do a full stack Meraki that is E-rate eligible. That's a little glimpse into our dashboard, which hopefully I'll have time to uh, kind of dive into a little bit. But uh, this is really what makes Meraki special. Um, the visibility, the ease of use, uh, layer seven application visibility, uh, being able to dive into a device, a user, whatever it may be. I'm not a tech genius and I find the dashboard in extremely intuitive and easy to, um, easy to navigate. So MR access points, this is about half of our business, kind of our bread and butter, it's where we started. Uh, the, the, the thing I want to touch on here, you can look at all the features and the highlights. We just released our 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6 access points, which we're really excited about. The MR45 and the MR55. Now, um, what you're going to see, obviously, 802.11x hasn't been fully ratified yet, but we're kind of ahead of the game with this. Um, they're, uh, they're backwards compatible, so they'll cover all the prior uh, uh, standards. Uh, the MR45, and you're going you're to probably see about 40% higher speeds and throughputs than you've seen with 802.11ac Wave 2. Um, the MR45 is going to have about, or it has two and a half gigs of capable throughput, and the MR55 has five gigs of throughput. So, um, so these are the best performing access points on the market. Really excited about these. Uh, only a slight increase in price from the MR42 and MR52. So, 
they're going to be the only way to go. With uh, they, they, they predict by I think 2022 that that um, that most everything on the market will be Wi-Fi six capable. With that, our MS switches. Uh, Meraki has the full line of um, of uh, edge switches uh, to to compare to the Catalyst on-prem switches. Our big focus here has been multi-gigabit because with, with AX, the power of AX access points, you need uh, more powerful switches uh, upstream. So multi-gigabit's been the big big focus for us. Um, we've got the layer full layer two, layer three gamut. Now we also just came out with a aggregation MS450 that has 40 gig ports. So we're doing a lot of uh, powerful switch stuff. And I will say, I think the coolest thing about the dashboard is the switches because you uh, you can not only physically stack these switches, but you can virtually stack them no matter where they are, no matter what campus there are. You got all your ports right here on one page. You can update ports quickly. You can troubleshoot quickly. It's pretty cool. So um, definitely a, definitely a great product line for us. And I think it just actually passed our wireless in revenue. So it's a significant part of our business. MX Security Appliances. This is the only full UTM firewall on the market that has SD-WAN built into it. So it's a pretty unique product out there. Um, it's got a lot of very rich security features in it. It's built on the Talos Intelligence platform, which the ASA and Firepower are also built on. Um, so it's, I think they're the biggest threat protection agency outside of the US government and it's built on that platform, so it's pretty pretty cool. Um, but they've also got a lot of Cisco advanced security features. We have anti-malware AMP, IPS IDS, content filtering. So it's a it's a very feature rich box, and um, and uh, it's 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 uh, it's been a solid solid performer for us. Systems manager endpoint management. This is the most widely deployed MDM on the market. Um, we're doing a lot of great stuff with schools. Uh, the beauty of it is, is obviously um, it's iOS focused, but it's going to cover the full gamut of, uh, of, of endpoints, whether it's Android, Mac, Chromebooks. Uh, it'll cover your PCs and laptops. So, um, so this, is, uh, this is a great product line for us. And another unique thing about it is it integrates with the Meraki hardware. So it can stand alone but it can also integrate with your wireless access points. It can integrate with your uh, MX security appliances. Push all those VPN settings and wireless settings down to your devices when they're enrolled. Meraki Inside, I kind of already uh, touched on this, um, but uh, if, you're, if you're looking at the Meraki firewalls, you definitely want to look at this because it adds a lot of value, um, especially if you're running a lot of uh, cloud applications. MV smart camera, so this is a two-year-old product line for us, grown very fast, um, actually our fastest growing category. Uh, our whole thing is um, everything is stored on the camera itself. So we have a 256 gig solid storage state drive on each, up to 256 gigs on the, on the camera itself. And you can offload, uh, you can export um, any instances off of the camera. Um, we also offer cloud, cloud archiving through Azure if you want to if you want to back up up to 180 days. So um, this is, we're on our second generation in our second year, and these things have come so far in two years. It's it's really exciting, and there's a lot of buzz around these things. We just released our new MV32, which is a kind of a compact fisheye 360 degree camera. Uh, these things are impressive, and I think they're definitely going to be a, a game changer. But we're doing a ton with these things for safer schools, and and uh, we'd love to. Hopefully, I'll get some time here to kind of jump into a demo and and uh, show you what they look like. Pretty cool. Actually, let's jump into that right now while we're at it. Give me a second here. All 
Okay. So. No, I didn't want the screen. Okay. So this is what it looks like, and it's hard to determine what, what would be going on when you're looking at a fisheye. But here's, here's kind of what we do here. So first of all, you can do a motion search in the fisheye view if you want. There's a little square there. We'll do a motion. Actually, let's go back to last week. Let's go to Tuesday of last week, and we'll do a motion search in this little area. It's pulling up. Okay. So what this is doing, and this is a new capability here, this is showing all the screenshots of activity in that area that we had highlighted. And what we're doing is we're taking a full scene and capturing it in a single frame. So instead of watching three minutes of video, you can see it in a single frame. And so if you wanted to go back and watch the video, you could click on it and go watch the video, but, but it's basically following that person through the motion activity on the area that we had highlighted. So pretty cool stuff. You can also, I'm going to exit this search. So you can also go, people have said, when is Meraki going to have PTZ? I want to I be able to point to Zoom. So this is even better than, than uh, PTZ. So you click in here, and it de-warps the image, and you can Sorry, my mouse is a little, let's try that again. My mouse is a little uh, overactive here. But if you want to uh, zoom in, you can zoom in. And you can also, geez, give me a second here. Sorry, having uh, technical issues. But you can also, yeah, I, I have this uh, little, so you can also turn and, of course, see 360 degree views. So if you, if you zoom in, you're going to capture what you're zooming in on, but you're not going to lose any of that footage of anything else around. So that's kind of why I say it's better than PTZ. Um, a lot of analytics built into this camera. We're continuing to add more people counting. Um, uh, there's, you know, you can count the amount of people entering a door, exiting a door. Great for student counts. Be alerted as to if you've got a gym that people shouldn't be in at a certain hour of the day. You can be alerted as to any motion activity. Um, so there's there's lots of uh, lots of great use cases on this. We've got APIs built on top of it to get more uh, analytical data. Um, but the feature velocity is very very rapid on these things. And if anybody wants to test one out, let us know. We'd love to get them in your hands. Does he have face recognition? It's got object detection, but it does not have. I mean, it, you, it, it it's not going to identify people. Okay. So that is kind of a quick glimpse into the cameras. How are we doing on time here? We're good on time. Um, I'm going to show you a couple other things just on the dashboard. All right, so this is, this is the Meraki corporate network in San Francisco. And you can see these are all of our different, uh, different networks within our organization. So I'm going to um, click on our Chicago office here, just because the San Francisco office is too busy and crazy. And this is kind of what you see. Uh, this is the client's page here. You can look at your, uh, your usage over different periods of time there at that top graph. And then you're seeing the highest usage uh, clients down to lowest usage. And then you have an application pie chart, so you can click in there and get more visibility into your applications. Uh, I'm going to focus, uh, I'm going to just go through one user. So we're going to go to the wireless traffic only. And let's pick on Jonathan Paddock. So um, we, we, uh, jumped into his device here. It's going to show you his locations right here. Um, you can always run an event log or a packet capture on the device. You can see that he's enrolled in our systems manager MDM. Uh, 
you can create a policy for devices if you want to, whether it's iPads or, or device specific, or um, you can create policies around what type of user it is, whatever you want to do. Um, so now if I wanted to follow this user, I'm going to go to our topology here and see what switch he's connected to and follow his device through the network. So this is our topology page here. So it's showing you that this user is coming in through AP13. This is his connection to the, the edge switch, to the core, and out the firewall. So you can follow his, his traffic. Uh, that firewall looks like it's a non-Meraki device, that little diamond, but we still detect it. You just can't manage it, obviously, from the dashboard. But really cool way to kind of follow a device through, through a network. Uh, you can even dive into that device and see what applications he's using. So from top to bottom, you're getting full visibility into what's going on with this, uh, with this user. Now, um, I, I just want to jump over to the switches really quick and kind of show you how easy it is to manage switch ports. So here we've got 920 switch ports. And um, let's say I want to just go update. i got to update a group of ports, so I just click on a few here just to show an example. And I hit edit. This is, this is things you can do in a split second in a, uh, updating ports from, um, from uh, PoE, enabling PoE to assigning it to a VLAN or a voice VLAN. Uh, Putting, on a, putting it on a port or a port schedule for energy savings, whatever you want to do. So really easy to manage this. We use tags a lot to identify different groups um, and uh, makes the management extremely easy from that standpoint. Yeah. What brand of switches? These are all Meraki switches. So Meraki branded switches. Yes. So Meraki has the cloud managed switches and then uh, you have Catalyst on-prem switches. So what we really do is look at what's your use case. Do you want to, are, are you looking to stay on-prem? Are you looking to go cloud? And so you have two, two offerings from Cisco. But these are, everything I'm talking about here is Meraki MS switches. Yeah. You can, just to highlight, right, you can run a hybrid environment. So if you went down the road to actually getting a Catalyst and Meraki, there is roadmaps and it's also currently with DNA Center, you can actually bring in configurations into DNA Center from the dashboard. So you can manage that from one platform. So that there's no, no, it's one or the other, it could be both. Right? And by the way, this is uh, Keith Adams, he's my Meraki engineering counterpart, so if, I'm sure a lot of you have talked to Keith. So, uh, so he's new to the team as well out here. Um, but we do see a lot of hybrid deployments um, where they're doing Meraki at the, at the edge and Cisco at the core. So, and they work very well together. And not outside of those two brands, right? No, we, they can integrate with any infrastructure. So, so Meraki does uh, most of the standard stuff, like it really does LLDP, so anything like HP, that is gonna support it, right? Um, there is some value from a Cisco perspective from both, but obviously you can interoperate with it. And, and that's the DNA Center? DNA Center is only Cisco specific, right? DNA Center is a Cisco product. So it's part of their whole digital network architecture roadmap to try and simplify access and um, software-defined access. So that web UI that we're looking at here, that's the only on Cisco base. That's That web UI is only on the Meraki platform. But the DNA Center is actually another, it's actually right now it's hardware only, it's on-prem, but eventually you probably have a cloud and it'll be APIs between the two. But what, you could have a single orchestration tool. So you wouldn't be tied to just having to go one around here, that's a Meraki switch and you go to dashboard. This is, a, you know, this is a Cisco switch and you go to DNA Center. And the Meraki one is interoperable with, say, HP. So it will work, right? I mean, it will connect, there'll be no connectivity issues, but from an orchestration perspective, if that's what you're talking about, no. But you can use APIs to orchestrate, right? So you can use Python, anything for programmability you could use. Good question, though. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's generally the evolution of a network engineer now is to use programmability tools. 
So, you know, things like uh, the Red Hat Linux power, uh, it's the tower, um, you know, Python scripting, XML, you know, anything that's programmable, you can, you can, we have the APIs, open APIs to do that. So you can send instructions to create a network, to modify ports, so anything's possible. Yeah, Meraki products are all stand. They can all be standalone products. You do get more value if you do the head to toe, of course. But um, but uh, we have we have people that just run our systems manager. We have people that just run our wireless. So there's lots of, and it integrates. It plays nice with. Is there like an identity management component, like ClearPass or some functionality? So, so funny enough, the first thing that was ever actually integrated with wasn't Cisco's ice. It's actually ClearPass. So it integrates with ClearPass. So if you're already down that road, but there will be something coming soon that kind of offers a ClearPass light, if you want to put it like that. But it just depends how in depth you're ready to do it. One X. So right now it works with ClearPass. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Any Regis, so it can work with NPS too. And then just to give a clarify, so there's five million API calls a day from the dash into the dashboard. So there's a lot of deep development from a Cisco perspective. So there's Cisco Developer Network. So you go to developer.cisco.com, and then it's meraki.io, which is another development area. You can actually see what's being developed around APIs. Yep, thank just, you. Just to show, this camera does exist. It's not a marketing tool, right? So it's you're giving one of those away, right? <laughs> no, that one I can't. But this is where you go to. It's that one I'm giving away. Yeah, yeah. We do give away a lot of networking gear, but we, we can't give away the cameras just yet. Um, so this is a little glimpse into wireless health. Now, I mentioned this was a new firmware update maybe uh, less than a year ago. We already have 750,000 of our customers using it. So and loving it. So um, what this is doing is this is showing a glimpse of, of it looks like you have a seven, we have a 7.9% failed connections rate. Um, and then it shows you your latency. And then you can kind of dive into the connections piece here. And, uh, and it'll show you kind of where you're failing here. It looks like most of the fail is coming on the authentication piece, 5.9%. 2% coming on the association. So this has been really really well received and, and a great value add to kind of understand where you're running into uh, where you're running into some wireless issues. Um, so how about some giveaways? It's nothing that exciting. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see who uh, how um, how many uh, worldwide networks does Meraki have? Yep. Uh, that would be 32 months. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's, um, who can name, uh, what's the name of this new camera? What model number? MP32. You already won one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> MP32? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, <laughs> Keith, you got any good questions? <laughs> How about, um, Let's see here. Uh, MR45. <laughs> yeah, you're ahead of the question. Uh, let's see here. How about, um, I got a really tough one. Can anyone name one of the school districts that I mentioned as a, as a use case? Orange County. All right. And we'll think we got one more pair of socks here. Um, uh, let's see, Keith, you got one? Um, well, if you can come up with both Wi-Fi 6 enabled APs. Yeah, the model numbers, can anyone? Oh, Thanks, David. So, um, does anybody have any questions before we move on to our special guest? No? Um, okay, so... I asked uh, Debbie and Robert here from Eagle Point School District uh, to s stand up. They're a great Meraki customer and kind of give their take on Meraki and what's, what, how it's helped their district. And um, so if you guys don't mind standing up and joining us. <laughs> um, so 
maybe you guys could start out by just telling a little bit about Eagle Point School District, like how many students you have, like how many schools you have, um, whatever else you kind of want to tell us about your district. 625 square, square miles, got 13 sites. About 4,500 plus students. It's a, a population is pretty small, but it's like you said, it's a big coverage area, a lot of, lot of real estate to cover. We're a pretty rural school, school district. Cool, okay. Uh, so, I got my questions here for you. Hold on one sec. <laughs> okay, and how big's your IT team? There's nine of us. Uh, Debbie here, she's our network administrator, so a lot of this stuff falls on her workstation to to, to deal with, but um, there's nine of us total plus an, an administrative assistant to our team. Um, and uh, with with a lot of the Meraki gear, she's actually able to effectively point and click on a lot of stuff and just get it done when we're tracking down some weird wireless problem, somebody kicks on a microwave, we can, we can see it happen. <laughs> the lights. You know. What um? Why don't you guys tell us kind of what your uh, overall infrastructure looks like and what you guys what Meraki products you're using specifically? Uh, we've got the uh, APs. We've got switches. Um, we're we're demoing cameras. Probably ten percent of our switching technology is the uh, Meraki switches, oh, and we have yeah. them we have them set up <laughs> as as kind of an edge. It's not part of our core, but we've we've added on to our Cisco switching technology with with these uh, Meraki switches. Um, and then, uh, like Debbie said, our wireless infrastructure is all, it's 100% Meraki based. We're currently using MR34s, but we're looking at the MR42s and 45s to see what's gonna best fit our use case scenario, probably over the summer to change some gear out. And then, uh, where we have a one-to-one -one program with iOS devices and the um, Meraki management console, the MDM, it's, it's been pretty, pretty instrumental in getting, getting this stuff deployed to every student and managing it. Um, it does it uh, without an agent. Most other MDMs use an agent located on the device, but the Meraki uh, management for iOS devices doesn't use an agent they make sure to uh, integrate all of the Apple, all of Apple's command structures so that they can actually send commands through the MDM and uh, not bog down the uh, device while it's doing it. That's well, this good. year, actually, Meraki and, and Apple are work really well together to have, like, we, we, we brought in a whole lot of new uh, iPads this year and had the profiles set up, I mean, pushed out, there, the, I mean, it, compared to what it has been, I mean, the the evolution over the years has just, you know, they keep evolving, getting better and better. I actually blame Susan for ever getting involved with Meraki. What was that 2012, 2013? I never. It was before it became Cisco Meraki. Mm -hmm. You know. It's so you've been a customer since 2012. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's great. So uh, and, and just watching the differences over the years, and they kind of listen to my complaining. If, if there was an issue, I mean, in the end, you know, they, they've addressed, they have this little awesome thing you didn't show up there. Make a wish. Make a wish. wish yeah. At and, the and of every page. I can't show it all in one hour, Debbie. See how you are. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, I mean, it, it's really been a, I mean, we were total, you know, my, my uh, backbone is complete, you know, the Cisco plane and just adding to, the, but being able to track things down. Uh, especially right now with any kind of interference, uh, the wireless health, you know, with SBAC coming on, it's been a great tool mm -hmm. to try to keep that all on track. Because, you know, especially if you have anything that's site based, um, that they put you, you can find out about things quick when it comes on your network. Alexa is great. <laughs> <laughs> you use, you use, uh, you use Meraki through Alexa? No. To oh, find it and say bye. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Um, and so how, I know it's, you've been a customer for a while, how were you first introduced to Meraki or? or? Um, originally, like I said, Susan was my, uh, I, my, here at ACPE is where I initially heard of it, and then there was the uh, uh, emails with a, have this webinar, get a free AP before E-Rate got involved that says, no, you can't do it anymore. Yeah. And it, it was very intriguing, because you know, with between, after the Cisco ASA, um, you know, the, the, oh, we had the, uh, I was a wheel seat controller and those access points and it, it was a great transition. It really was. It welcomed one. Yeah. So. So any last, uh, last takeaways as to why Meraki's been good for Eagle Point or, or what you, uh, what, what you like about it? We haven't had to put on 20 more people. Yeah. So it, it's been neat, and it's and, it, and the troubleshooting to be able to talk to somebody and, and get things worked out has been good. So. Does anybody have any questions for Debbie or Robert? Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Oh, we got a question. What did you use before Meraki? Oh, we were Cisco. Oh, I had the Wilsey okay. controllers, um, and for access, you know, we had the depending on what era it was, and I had several different models of APs. But they were, you know, we, we've always basically, okay, we did SMCs probably about 20 years ago. And when we found, you know, got into Cisco, it's, it's just evolved since so then. Our backbone's just, was pretty strong, especially when we felt really good with our infrastructure when they first uh, decided to go with the iPads or <laughs> the things they throw at us. It's been good to be able to jockey things around and work and have smooth sailing for most part. On um, this uh, Meraki MDM yeah. for your iOS device, you said there's no client agent, there's no agent at the end. Is, do you still have the capability to put something out like through self-service, lock the app store down and have some Absolutely. modified have, version yeah. of the store? We yeah. are, we have the, uh, so part of the MDM is um, we, we can let the uh, Apple app store exist. We usually do that for staff, but for students, we have the Meraki store okay. instead, which is a curated list of, of apps that um, students can install or uninstall at will. And uh, it's, it's, it's a subset that we control. Um, we, we obtain licensing usually in bulk, and then we can add it to the Meraki store for uh, students to download. So they can go shopping through that store, or you can push it out as well? Yep, sure, either yeah. way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's been fun to be able to have uh, for instance, I got involved with the girls who code, yeah. <laughs> and so I run a little one of one of our our, our sites, and uh, it, it, some of our teachers actually use the Hour of Code, basically. And so to to come in with something new, to be able to uh, ask, you know, to to get the different apps just pushed out to those girls at that point in time, say, oh, I'm going to be doing a class today. Can we have Block Island or whatever for the kids? third through fifth grade that we do and it's it, it they're there by the time they get there and it's just neat to be able for them to say oh this is new we get all excited about it it's fun and if the need arises we can we can give us but we can take us away yeah, that's at the true same too. time <laughs> <laughs> we can redact whatever we'd like yeah so having the meraki wireless and maybe even the wireless help in addition to the mdm are you able to kind of see issues that are coming up so say back to school time when you're pushing out new devices and all the apps there at the same time does having all the different devices be rocking having dashboards and network help do you have some additional visibility you think to that process and troubleshooting any bottlenecks there have been but it's been evolving because we've learned i mean but this was back <coughs> when we first, we didn't realize that i mean our different technology department, you know, our, our staff, they, you know, like I, we have one person running the MDM, and I do one part with the wireless type, and uh, not realizing that when the staff says, oh, I want 10 different applications, if they're over a gig a piece at one point in time, and they're all, yeah, we, we, we've learned and we've evolved, it, you know, that was not a Meraki issue with that, but we were able to rectify it and find out what was going on at that point in time. It helped us find out why we weren't moving at that point. Having it all, <laughs> on, having it all in one dashboard yeah. makes navigating between the MDM uh, system and the wireless system pretty pretty quick. It's all on a big left-hand menu. We have it. We have our setup um, and the dedicated networks 
um, for each location, and it's just it's just a click. You're already logged into the dashboard. There's no other tool, no second monitor to look at and compare back and forth. It's all it's all right there. So, so the way you do that, Ray, is you can use the application visibility. If you see it hitting the Apple, a lot of Apple apps, mm -hmm. and then you can go and say, okay, is it going to the same SSID? And then you and then you can correlate it with Systems Manager. So, so it gives you that visibility for, right, that's what's causing you to suck bandwidth on your eight access points. Gotcha. Oh, a huge, uh, you know, and this is something that is addressed that we can do in the MDM that, okay, Apple puts out a new update, it's huge. So we're actually able through the MDM to say, stagger it, stop it, can't do it. That was huge. Yeah. How long did you stop it for? What was it? We're, uh, three, three, days three, days three days is what we, okay have it and it, it, like 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 Debbie said we uh we can stagger it so um uh we have one whole high school we usually let them roll it out first so we put a one day uh stop on that and then our other schools trickle in behind that typically and but, we're, we're also able to really re push out profiles whenever we need to because you have your uh, updates where not every not everybody does updates, but we can kind of force it. We have I like our guy that does MDM is kind of a jokester. One morning I turned on my iPad and Cap, uh, Captain Card's looking at me like, <laughs> "No, I haven't updated quick enough." Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can send out little messages and you know, <laughs> oh, you're not supposed to be doing this, and this is why. And eh, you're off the network. It, it, it's kind of cute, you know. So does anyone heard about fast lane? Oh yeah. Oh so, yeah. So fast lane was kind of a thing that we worked with Apple. So what it does, it almost like QoS for Apple devices. So basically, it detects it's a, it's a wireless AP. I don't know if it could be an error now. It could be a Meraki AP. But it, what it does, it gives you a higher priority for those Apple devices. So if you're doing testing, you know, you know, everyone suffers that whole bandwidth killer, you know, Pearson testing. Then you can actually prioritize those devices. Uh, especially Apple, right? But it's a good tool. We can set minimum bandwidths, well, like any management tool. You can set um, a maximum bandwidths. You know, we have most devices, I think, throttle to about 10, 10 gigabits a second, so it doesn't saturate our network. But um, with that fast lane stuff, it gives them kind of a an initial speed boost, so they don't feel this huge buffering lag when they all go open a YouTube video, they can they can get it right out of the gate and start watching their content. Does the dashboard have user levels for like building admins or TAs or building? Um, so you can, you can do level of admin access. The best way, this is why things like tags are important because you can actually assign tags to roles. So if you've got people who are actually like, they're really just the on-site tech, is fairly consistent with most school districts, right? You have someone there. Um, you can give them a lower level of access. They can log in, but you may not want them to touch it. It's a trunk ball, and then there's a POE, has a phone on it or AP. You can actually put tags in there saying, do not touch or whatever, and then they are, they are completely limited from touching. They can view, but they can't do anything. So you can get that level of access. It just takes a bit of thought, but it, it's, it's not hard. You didn't touch the, on the traffic shaping. No, I didn't touch on that. I can't, I can't touch on everything, Deb. Um, it's really cool with the layer seven. It, and yeah, the all the categories are built in for the traffic. You can do traffic shaping at the AP level or you can do it at the firewall level. All the categories are already built in so you can quickly, uh, you know, remove entire or throttle back whatever you need to do. Um, you don't have to sit and build categories, which is kind of nice. The other thing I wanted to touch on with the dashboard uh, um, administration piece uh, if you have camera peop camera admins totally separate from your network admins, you can separate off those, off those, uh, off. You, so there's a wall there. They can't they can't mess with the networking gear. You can't mess with the camera gear. The other thing we have uh, a lot of schools starting to add law, local law enforcement as a read only to can't to the cameras, which is which has been uh, been been a really uh, positive step. Um, so. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of alerting capabilities and and things along those lines as well. So any other questions before we let Debbie and Robert off the? Yeah, I was 
yes. So you had mentioned if I got my facts right here that Cisco DNA you can manage uh, all the Meraki stuff. But can you do it in the other direction where Meraki can uh, configure like uh, Cisco? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Whether that could that could change, but the, the idea right now is uh, that it, it could be a two-way exchange on the APIs. Um, right now, it's not. Um, so there's DNA Center 1.4 just about to be released. Um, and that is it's just one direction. It's pulling from from the dashboard track and then propagating all the policies and all the switches and the APIs. But it's not. There's not going to be not. Well, because there's so much value in our dashboard, and it's so much cleaner. I mean, they're, they're Meraki fine DNA center. We, we, we joke about that, right? It's in Cisco, it's like, that looks very really miraculous. And that's kind of the way they're looking. They're trying to make a dashboard very clean. So that's what Meraki's been doing for the last 10 year plus years, is they're trying to keep it simple. And they're trying to do that with a lot of the, and who's run PI, who's run all, all, the, all the management platforms that Cisco's had, right? It's always been, a little kludgy, or it's been flash based, or it's been Java based. I mean, they're gradually getting HTML5, but it's been a little bit of a, you know, a hard road for them. Um, but it's gradually getting better, and so I, I suspect potentially there could be a two way exchange, but it's not there yet. How are you guys doing, BYOD? Very well. <laughs> we don't. You guys don't. We, we just aren't because we're one to one. So you don't allow BYOD at all? We have a guest network. Yes. If they, you know, if we have a true guest come in, but we're not allowing the students to come in with their iPhones and jump on the network. But we do have. You want to? So yeah. I do BYOD in our system with the Meraki platform, and we just have a separate policy for each the, the new devices that come in. So if the student has their own device, we assign a policy that can you know shape their traffic and watch their traffic that way. Yeah, man. So on, on registered MAC address, is that what you're? Yeah. So we okay. yeah by that address. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you can go really you can go really wild and crazy on some of the policies, but at the end of the day, it's going to be what's what's the superintendent is going to back you on. Because I've seen where even things like identity services engine, they want to deploy it, they want to do posturing, profiling, and all of a sudden there's no meat behind it, and teachers going, I don't want that. Teachers, students going, I don't want it, and then all of a sudden it gets axed. So you know you've got to you've got to make sure you have that the layer I call it layer eight figured out first before you start. <laughs> layer eight. <laughs> That's good. So any other questions for Debbie, Robert, Keith? Uh, anything at all come to mind? We, got a, we, we went kind of fast. We've got about eight minutes. We can give you eight minutes back of your day if you want, or we can uh, talk more. <laughs> well, I'll head that way. Tell well, fa <laughs> thank, you to, thank you, Debbie and Robert. Is this the 45? 55. So this is the uh, new MR55 access point, kind of slick. They said it looks like a, uh, a uh, race car. I kind of agree. Hopefully the, speed, hopefully the speeds are that fast. Anyone wants to, but kind of a uh, pretty slick form factor. So we're kind of. Eight radios in it, by the way. Eight radios, yeah. Sure. Uh, MSR. Sure. <laughs> I'm an engineer. I'll just there. say MSRP is fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. So. Um, Are you giving it away? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, no. And then the uh, the MSRP on this one is about fifteen hundred bucks too. So, um, which for a three hundred sixty degree camera is pretty pretty darn good. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? What's the megapixel camera? Is it? You know what it is offhand? Oh, jeez, I don't know now. Oh, I'll be under 16, I think it is. We'll get back down that. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, I can show you the live demo there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stop by our booth. Wow. We're, we're booth 37 upstairs. We'll be going from uh, 515 to 745, assuming we have power and everything. Keith will be dem doing some demos. Um, we'd love to, you know, show you anything we can and answer any questions. and. And uh, Rick, you, you mentioned uh, 
the cameras have onboard storage. Mm -hmm. Is that the primary storage yes. for the video? So yes. it's not stored in the cloud? So, so the whole idea, right, from, and, and the, the, if you ever hear the uh, guy, unfortunately he's English, so I, sorry, um, <laughs> it's, uh, he says, I'm trying to solve problems. And the biggest problem they saw in the industry was the one the, was the NVRs. The, the sheer effort to maintain the NVRs um, was where they wanted to do this and then have it everything cloud managed too. So onboard storage first, we have cloud storage as an option. Um, so it actually gets pushed up to Azure as an option. Um, we have a that and that's all SSL and then it's decrypted, or decrypted, it's encrypted and then it's at rest and it's partition specific for your, so it's certificate based, no one else can access it. So that's the other option. And then obviously if you need to just export video, it's pretty easy just to export it sure. to an MP4. So is the retention based on just the available storage, or is it based on a timeline? So, so really good questions, Chris. So um, it's going to be based on the settings you actually have, right? So there's a thing called motion-based retention. Yeah. So what it does is it says, OK, I've got no activity on this particular you know, uh, camera for, for a duration of time. And it actually takes it out. So it actually clears up space as it goes along. So like in schools, you, you may have windows where there's at night, no activity, right? So it's only going to store the activity. So it, it depends. And then it also depends on the quality of the video. Um, so if you're doing 1080p all the time, then obviously it's going to reduce it. If you're doing 720p, it's going to increase it. So there's settings you can change, but... Yeah, and, and the cool thing is you can go through the settings and it, it and changes your days you right there, days of retention. So you so, change from standard to high def. So again, it's what, what you really need from a security perspective, right? Is what, what do the police departments need? What, what do you need um, for to hand off in cases of an incident? You know, what, what are you allowed to retain? So that could be district specific, or it could be, you know, county specific, or even state specific. And go ahead. All right, I'll, I'll come back. So you're talking like a gig of an hour if there's a beef desk sitting next to the camera or... <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> no, so no, I mean, no, I mean, no, no think, when you say gig per hour, you're talking about throughput, so there's, uh, we're not talking about throughput, right, because everything's on here. So, storage, no. No, I mean, it's, it's really going to be how long it retains the data, not necessarily, you know, because you could be active all the time. I mean, like the Cisco store, we demo a lot, and it's pretty active pretty much from 8 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night. We don't do anything with that, we leave it just running full 1080p, no motion-based motion, motion based retention, and it's around about 15 days, right? But if you turn on motion-based retention, it'll be about 60. So, go on, Rick. Uh, so are the cameras, do they follow the same uh, method for licensing as your other products, mm -hmm. where it's a subscription base? Right? Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's everything. <laughs> And it would pool. It would pool into your net. If you have an existing Meraki network, it would be added to the pool just like any other device. We take the value of the device and the terms of the license and add it to the to today. Yeah, yeah. That's that's going to be changing soon. This, does your uh, dashboard allow for uh, an easy offload of security camera data from the the local storage to? You know, remote storage. I, I, the only are you talking about on mass? Are you talking about large amount? Yeah, I'm talking about, you know, if I have 100 of, my, 100 of those cameras in my district and all of my data is stored on my camera and I'm a little worried about theft in a specific location mm -hmm. um, and having that data lost due to a theft of a camera, mm -hmm. can I set up a daily trans offload of data from this local storage to, you know, centralized storage? Okay, so... <laughs> That, that would be an API. You, you can absolutely write an API to call in and pull it. Okay. Um, that would probably be the easiest way today. Okay. Now, are we looking at, as part, you know, when we get to the feature velocity components of it, that could be one that gets added as an option to offline, offline to another storage, whether just a, you know, a standard NAS, right? Um, that could happen. I, I, can't, I can't promise that, but they... We've definitely had quite a few customers requesting it. If you, the more people definitely. make a wish on that, the better. Yeah, um, Because then it gets a little bit more exposure. But I, I mean, that's something we've heard quite a bit, especially in the public sector. Because I mean, you know, obviously, for legality reasons, we have to have it. So.
but we have a Snapdragon processor built into this thing, so there's going to be a lot more. There's a lot of room for a lot more features to be added. So yeah. keep making wishes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Well, thank you guys for letting us be a part of your day. We'll be at booth 37 upstairs. Please stop by and say hello. And thanks for uh, thanks for coming.